As the 2020 Olympic Games commences in Tokyo today, in the sport of sailing, the world body, World Sailing has released a series of videos covering who is in contention for medals. The Sailing World on Water wishes all contestants the best, and enjoy the experience. So here are the classes. The 49er is a high-performance two-person skiff. With a hull measuring just under 5 metres long, the 49er has wide wings protruding from either side of the hull. This increases the leverage and therefore the speed of the boat, with the helm and crew needing great agility to move around the 49er without falling overboard. With the potential for big rolling waves in Enoshima, there's the risk of the 49er pitch poling, which is when the nose digs into the wave and the boat cartwheels head over heels, throwing the sailors over the handlebars. 19 boats will compete in Enoshima, with the first race scheduled for the 27th of July. America's Cup winners earlier this year, Peter Burling and Blair Tuke, go to Tokyo's defending Olympic champions and remain the favourites to win 49er gold for New Zealand. Bronze medalists from Rio 2016, Eric Heil and Thomas Plussel of Germany, always turn it on for the big occasion. Other serious podium potential includes the Spanish team of Diego Botin and Iago Mara, and Great Britain's 2017 world champions Dylan Fletcher and Stu Bithell. The 2008 Olympic champion Jonas Vaar is back representing Denmark, crewed by Jakob Precht Jensen. Shime Fantella became the first sailor to win a gold medal for Croatia in the 470 class five years ago in Rio. Teaming up with his brother Mihavil, Shima has made a successful switch to the 49er skiff, the brothers winning the 2018 World Championships after just 18 months in this demanding class. Others to watch include Austria's Benjamin Bilstein and David Hussel, second at last year's European Championships, and the fast-improving Dutch team of Bart Lambrex and Tim van Vuut. The 49er FX is the women's version of the 49er Skiff, with a shorter mast and slightly smaller sail plan. Like the men's 49er, in the early days of learning to handle this challenging skiff, the women were capsizing and pitch poling as they learned how to tame the boat. But over time, the sailors have learned to master the quirks of the 49er FX and love the sheer thrill of going sailing in this demanding but rewarding boat. The 49er FX made its first Olympic appearance at Rio five years ago when the battle for gold and silver remained in the balance until the final stages of the medal race. The gold and silver medalists from Rio 2016, respectively Brazil's Martina Grail and Kayana Kunza, and New Zealand's Alex Maloney and Molly Meach, will again be in contention for the podium. However, they face strong competition from Spain's Tamara Echegoyen and Paula Barcelo the 2020 world champions. Echegoyen knows how to win at the Olympics, having taken gold as helm of the Spanish entry in the women's match racing event at London 2012. Watch out for the 2018 world champions Annemiek Beckering and Annette Duetsch of the Netherlands, and 2020 European champions Tina Lutz and Susanna Burke of Germany. Having narrowly missed selection for Germany at two previous games, the long-term team of Lutz and Burke are doing everything to make sure that their first visit to the Olympics results in a medal. Great Britain's Charlotte Dobson and Saskia Tidy have always been strong in the breeze, but have worked hard to iron out any weaknesses at the lighter end of the wind spectrum. 21 boats will race in the 49er FX fleet, with the first start gun scheduled for Tuesday the 27th of July. While it was always possible for women to compete in Olympic classes in the Open era, the reality was that very few did. So for the 1988 Games in Korea, the first ever women's sailing event was created and the 470 was the equipment selected. The women use exactly the same equipment as the men in their 470 division. The gold and bronze medal winning helms from Rio 2016 have teamed up with new crews for the Tokyo cycle and the fight for the top of the podium in the women's 470 looks set to be a duel between Great Britain's pair, Hannah Mills and Ailey McIntyre, and the French pair, Camille Lecointe and Aloise Retournaz. 
However, the Olympic Games is never quite so clear-cut, and the recently crowned world champions Silvia Mas and Patricia Cantero look well-placed to maintain a strong Spanish tradition of Olympic success in the 470. Japanese fans will be all eyes on 2018 world champions Ai Kondo and Miho Yoshioka to win a medal on home waters, although it's been a long time since the Japanese crew has had an opportunity to compete against their rivals. Another one to watch is the Dutch team of Aphrodite Ziegers and Lobke Burkhout, runners-up at this year's World Championships. Ziegers convinced Burkhout, now aged 40, out of retirement to see if she can add a gold medal to the silver that she won at Beijing 2008 and the bronze at London 2012, not to mention five world titles in the class. That's the kind of experience that could really help in the pressured environment of Tokyo. The women's 470 will feature 21 teams. They set sail on the 28th of July and their medal race will be the final medal decider at the Olympic sailing competition on the 4th of August. The Finn is the oldest boat at the Olympic Games, making its debut at the 1952 edition. It's four and a half metres long, has a single sail of 10.6 square metres, and every boat goes through a strict measurement process before competition. Known as the men's heavyweight dinghy, the average Finn athlete weighs over 90 kilos and tends to be over 1 meter 82 tall. The Finn requires immense strength and fitness to hike the boat hard upwind for maximum speed, along with the enormous cardiovascular workout of pumping the sail and surfing the waves downwind. Great Britain has won this event at every Games since Sydney 2000, with Sir Ben Ainsley winning three consecutive gold medals from 2004 to 2012, before passing the baton to Giles Scott who won in Rio 2016. While Scott was the clear favourite for the last Games, this time the Britain is just one of a number who have a clear shot at the gold medal. New Zealand's Josh Junior won the 2019 World Championships and beat his compatriot and training partner Andy Maloney in a tight selection battle. John Borberic won the world title in 2018 and the Olympic test event in Enoshima in 2019 and is aiming to become the first ever sailor to win a gold medal for Hungary. In 1996, Roy Heiner won a bronze medal in the Finn for the Netherlands and now his son, past laser world champion Nicholas Heiner, aims to at least match or better his father's performance exactly a quarter century later. The youngest Finn competitor in Tokyo is Joan Cardona, who only recently qualified his country, Spain, for the last spot on the start line with a spectacular second place at this year's World Championships. This makes Cardona an outside bet to upset the more experienced competitors in the Finn fleet. The starting gun will sound for the first time for the Finn on the 27th of July with 19 sailors competing in 10 races ahead of the medal race. The laser radial is the same 4.19 metre hull as used by the men in the laser standard fleet, except that the sail is just over a square metre smaller, measuring 5.76 square metres. The radial made its first Olympic appearance as the women's single-handed boat at the 2008 Games in China and, like the men's laser, requires immense cardiovascular fitness and core strength. A good racing weight for the radial is around 65 kilograms, although heavier than that is no bad thing when the sea gets choppy or wavy. With silver and gold from the past two games, Marit Baumeister of the Netherlands looks well placed in Tokyo to score a hat-trick of Olympic medals. The Dutch sailor will be hard pushed to match gold from Rio 2016 though, with the Rio bronze medalist Anne-Marie Rindom of Denmark looking powerful throughout the Tokyo cycle, winning the 2019 world title amongst many other medals on the world stage. 2018 world champion Emma Plaskart of Belgium is another serious medal contender. Poland, Greece and Japan are also pinning high hopes on their athletes reaching the radial podium in Enoshima. Making a late run for the Games after competing in the Volvo Ocean Race, then trying her hand at a 49er FX skiff campaign, is Ireland's Annalise Murphy. 
After narrowly missing a medal at London 2012, Murphy worked hard on her speed in light winds to win a silver at Rio 2016. At 1.86 metres tall, she's always been quick in strong winds and despite her lack of recent time in the boat, could yet win a second Olympic medal in the rolling waves of Enoshima. The largest fleet at the Games, with 44 athletes, Laser Radial Racing will start on the 26th of July. The NACRA 17 was the first event in Olympic sailing that required mixed gender teams. Since this high performance 17 foot catamaran burst onto the scene eight years ago, crews have been experimenting with which way round works best. Male helm, female crew, or female helm, male crew. Both combinations have proven successful, but what is vital is that the helm and crew work in complete harmony keeping this tricky twin-hulled seesaw in balance at all times. When the NACRA 17 was launched for the four-year cycle leading up to Rio 2016, it was already extremely challenging as a semi-foiler. Then after the games had been completed, the NACRA 17 was upgraded to become a fully foiling machine, capable of flying above the surface. This makes it faster, but also more demanding to sail, and it keeps the helm and crew on their toes for every second that they're foiling over the waves. Nose dives and splashdowns can happen with very little warning, meaning that no race lead is ever guaranteed. Italy's Ruggiero Tita and Caterina Banti have set the pace for much of the past five years since the NACRA 17 went fully foiling and won the World Championship in 2018. Meanwhile, the 2020 World Champions, John Gimson and Anna Burnett from Great Britain, who are coached by multiple Olympic medalist Ian Percy, have been one of the strongest teams of the past two years. All three medal-winning crews from Rio 2016, Argentina, Australia and Austria, are real contenders for a podium repeat. Just a few weeks short of his 60th birthday, can Santiago Langer of Argentina, again crewed by Cecilia Carranza Saroli, repeat his gold medal winning heroics of 2016? The fleet of 20 boats will start their competition on the 28th of July. The simplest equipment in the Olympic sailing competition is the RSX Windsurfer with a board that measures 286 centimetres long and 93 centimetres wide. The women compete with an 8.5 square metre sail, which can power them along at speeds well in excess of 20 knots in stronger winds. This is a sport that demands very different skills in different wind conditions. There are no rules governing pumping of the sail, so in light airs, the sailors pump the sail as hard and as frequently as their cardiovascular fitness will allow. For this reason, windsurfers are believed to be amongst the fittest athletes right across the whole games, on a par with marathon runners. As the wind gets stronger, the pumping becomes less critical, and the athletes can lean back and let the wind power them along at high speed. Although good balance, agility, and a high level of strength and fitness are still prerequisites for success. Windsurfing athletes tend to be tall and lean with a low body fat percentage, but age is not necessarily a barrier, with medals sometimes going to teenagers and sometimes to competitors in their late 30s, Italy's four-time Olympic medalist Alessandra Sensini being a great example. Winner of the 2018, 2020 and 2021 World Championships Lillian de Oish of the Netherlands is the favourite for Tokyo Gold, but with a strong field lining up against her. Israel's Katie Spitchkoff, Italy's Marta Maggetti and Great Britain's Emma Wilson are all among the serious contenders. China have a strong history of success in women's windsurfing, which Yunju Lu will be looking to continue. Previous performances at the Olympic Games bode well for Poland, Zofia Nocetti klepaczka the bronze medalist at London 2012, and also for the defending Olympic champion from France, Charlene Picon. The fleet of 27 racers will start competition on Monday the 26th of July. Now for some of the potential medal winners and we start with British sailor. 
Hannah Mills. And preserving the world's waterways, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the dams, everything is incredibly important. Uh, the ocean in particular sustains all of us, it sustains all life on Earth. It, it produces 50% of the oxygen we breathe uh, and it's a massive carbon sink. So for all that CO2 we're producing, it absorbs an awful lot of it, but it's struggling and our actions are essentially killing it and without the ocean we, we won't be here so what more is there to say it's, it's, it's imperative to human life. Sustainability in our sport sailing and beyond in all sport is incredibly important to me. Um, I sort of had my personal sustainability journey begin properly I guess in the in the Rio Olympic cycle um, just witnessing some of the devastation around the world um, in terms of plastic pollution and it just it just really hit, hit home and made me want to do something about it and I think sport has a huge play, a huge role to play in terms of I guess accelerating the change we need to combat climate change um, and I think sailing is really well positioned to do that through ocean racing through inshore racing like uh, the Olympics and, and yeah I hope to be a big part of that going forward. I think the one major thing at this Olympic Games for me is about athletes using their voice to highlight these these global challenges we're facing um, and the Olympics is an incredible platform, you know, we're going to be speaking to the media every single day, um, so just getting that message out there a bit more and, and encouraging more people to, to start their journey in terms of understanding the sustainability challenges would be an amazing thing. I'm really excited to be at my first games and you know, just looking forward to the start of it and, and just enjoy uh, the feeling and the experience that comes along with it. Yeah, I got to Selim because of my siblings. Uh, my sister actually went to uh, the Olympics in Beijing. So yeah, she was sort of my inspiration uh, to start sailing and continue pursuing this Olympic uh, journey. My brother was also sailing at the time. And yeah, both of my siblings were the ones who really got me going into the sport. Yeah, I'm currently training with uh, Jan Luka Ziako from Slovenia uh, and we'll be training together in Croatia all the way up until the Games. I've known him for many years already. Uh, we've been on the Olympic circuit for quite a while, some time. And yeah, we were good friends and yeah, really happy to have him as my training partner. It was World Cup final in Marseille and yeah, it was nice to be on the podium with Jan. And yeah, uh, it's been a long uh, Time since then, and yeah, just happy to continue uh, being training with him and racing, and yeah, I think I I would like to think that I work pretty hard, and yeah, I just I'm very focused on what I I, I want to achieve, and yeah, I just do whatever I can to keep on improving. Yeah, so that's why I think. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to Paris uh, after Tokyo, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to be at a better position than I am right now, like be uh, better sailor and yeah we'll see uh, where I go from here and yeah just looking really forward to Tokyo and then of course Paris. Yeah. India is all about cricket, so sailing, well, um, myself and the three other athletes who qualified for the Olympics, they are the first ones to actually qualify for the Olympics from India. So we have been actually boosting a lot uh, in India about sailing. From Laser Radial, uh, Netra Kumanan, she's here as well, and from 49, Ganapati and Varun. So with these four sailors, I've been, uh, well, when I started sailing, I was with them and we all almost the same age group and we all like really close friends so that's why it makes it special when we all qualified 
because we all want, like when we were kids, we dreamt as a kid, like, uh, you know, want to be as Olympian and get an Olympic medal. But the first stage is to be an Olympian. So here we are, like, you know, we couldn't believe when we actually did it, but it kind of sunk in now. But yeah, it was great feeling with, like, with the friends, you know, who we actually grew up uh, with. So yeah, we sailed in Oman and I finished second and secured the spot. When I was uh, crossing the finishing line, I was like, oh, is, this is really happening. And I'm like uh, really excited and everybody was really emotional because it's one of the uh, like rare time to see actually. And my sister was there racing uh, in the medal race as well and she was crying. Uh, it was quite emotional uh, and I'm really happy that I was part of it. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, really. I want to be in the top 20% or 75% of the fleet and which is basically top 20 uh, out of 35. So as a young athlete you always want to be going forward and forward and this is my first Olympics so I want to be uh, taking whatever I can get and uh, learn as much as possible and aim for 2024 uh, bigger, like go bigger, yeah. I actually want to improve sailing in India as a sport because uh, everybody loves uh, individual sport and uh, other different sports like uh, it's already at the peak like wrestling and uh, cricket India and like it's uh, already there so I want to bring sailing uh, like at that level where uh, British sailing is so huge so I want to uh, at least bring at least inspire the young generation where they actually learn sail uh, learn how to sail and not to be afraid of the water you know like uh, like it's a nice sport uh, at the end of the day, so yeah. So my name is Anne-Marie Rindham and normally I sail the laser radio. Um, I'm currently working towards uh, Tokyo and uh, I'm the newest member of the Denmark Sales UP team. Normally, my, my Olympic boat, like the laser, it takes like 10 minutes to rig and uh, it takes maybe 10 seconds to pull it in the water and I'm off sailing. But here, um, the boat takes maybe two hours. There is a lot of things that is happening for just getting one hour on the water. I've been sailing the laser for 12 years, so I also needed some new, um, new perspective in sailing. And I haven't been sailing, to be honest, other boats maybe J70, but not very much. Um, so this is a great opportunity to me, for me to be a part of and learn from, from the, all the guys and, and from this big boat. Yeah, obviously it's not the, the greatest timing in terms of being here in Bermuda and taking time out from my campaign, but I think it's giving me more than it's taking from the campaign. And it's just one of those opportunities that you don't say no to. And obviously, obviously I'm really stoked that a small country like Denmark can have a team in the sales EP. I mean, that's amazing. Um, and to be a part of it, you know, I've been, I've been following it. And since I saw it on, on the website that they are trying to, to have female um, sailors into the program, I was really stoked. And I, I, um, I was going on for days, like, should I call Nikolai, should I not? <laughs> but then luckily I, he called me and asked if I wanted to be a, a part of it. Normally I'm, I'm alone in the boat, but um, back at home, you know, we are also a team, but it, it's different because by the end of the day, it's me who has to perform and, and only me and I can blame myself. But, but here to be a part of such a big team, like it's both like the, the tech team, of course, on, on shore, but also the sailors, they are very funny to be around. You know, they are good guys and they always, I feel like that I'm very welcomed here on the team and there is no bad vibes or anything. If I have a question or if I have a comment to something on the water or on, on shore, they're willing to just uh, listen to me also. And I feel like that's, that's very important so everybody can contribute to the team. I think it, it creates a pathway for, for females. It is a, a man-dominated world and it is hard when we don't have the experience like they have. But I think this is also necessary for a step in the female direction because there is a lot of good sailors um, that are females. So we just, we need opportunities like this. And I feel like that's, that's what SailGP is giving us. I'm 
common ones are named Thai Radio Sailor. When I was young, I didn't think much about sailing. I just wanted to sail for fun. But then one day, I saw Arthur Sailor. They, they were in the national team and they got to wear the suit for the national team. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want to wear one too. So it's how I started to think about getting in the national team. Back then, I was like 10 years old. And when I got to wear the suit, I got in the national team. I started like, I want to get more than that. I want to go abroad to travel. And then I dream about the Olympics. My biggest achievement in sailing so far, I would say, uh, I got to be the first Thai woman who qualified to the Olympics in sailing. Yeah, so I think it's good for Thai sailing team because it's like we already have the path to the Olympics already, so we can develop more in the future. My past Olympic experience is from the Olympics in Rio 2016. It was my first Olympic. Just the moment I got there, the moment I got into the Olympic village, it amazed me a lot. It's like I got to see how the other athletes do in their routine life. Not only sailor, but other athletes from other sports as well. And the feeling when we compete in the Olympics is it's different from other events, like it's not the same at all. The um, competitive level is so high. It's like everyone is going for it. It's like it's their, it's only chance in their life. Yeah, so it was amazing to me to see that. I really want to go to the Olympics and like, I really want to race, but, but before that I, prepare myself as well because the situation it wasn't that good. I got one more year to prepare myself, put myself back together and and do my routine life. Like I just aim for the medal race. I want to be in the medal race in the Olympics. So my dad was a sailor before and he did uh, many regattas on the G24 and he just uh, signed me up at my uh, sailing school in the Caribbean. Last couple of years I went to Aris in 2018. Uh, recently I did the uh, Europeans and in 2020 I did the uh, Miami World Cup. So yes, I also prepared for the Pan American Games in 2019. Um, in Peru, the fleet was very, very, very strong. We had uh, top sailors from the USA, from Brazil, also from Guatemala. These guys were very, very fast and um, I learned a lot. And it was uh, qualified, which I sadly wasn't able to qualify, but uh, I sailed hard and I gave everything I had and it was a good regatta. So I tried to um, qualify for the Olympic Games and unfortunately I wasn't able to qualify uh, my country and a few uh, several um, opportunities that there was presented to me. Um, then uh, through that I continued to train as if I was going to the Olympics. I applied for uh, a wild card and uh, I continued to sail. Every month I sent the reports about my training and I continued and I basically uh, hoped that I would get accepted and uh, ever since I've been training and for me nothing has changed. I mean having the you know, confirmation that I'm going to the Olympic Games is a huge relief, but the plan was to continue training as if I was going to the Olympics anyway, so it's been a huge plus. In quarantine, I focused uh, when I could not sail or go out to do uh, any type of core training, uh, theory, reading books, uh, different books about tactics, also uh, trying to understand the laser a bit more uh, technically, and also uh, practicing on uh, virtual regatta from time to time to keep uh, my uh, tactical decisions uh, on point. I'll be heading to Tenerife where I'll be doing a major, major training uh, camp with Andrew Lewis and Kike Araton from El Salvador and Trinidad and Tobago with uh, my coach Javier. Well, this is a rock star, though, right? A rock star. So I'll be doing my last month there uh, preparing for the games.
I joined this group uh, a few months ago and ever since uh, I've joined them I've been improving. These guys are the top dogs. I'm trying to reach their level and they are uh, every day teaching me uh, new tricks and uh, tips to uh, reach the top. My dream is to win a medal for my country, uh, first of all, so that's what I'm uh, preparing and training for and I'm preparing for Paris right now. Uh, it starts by racing, it starts by training hard and it starts by sitting with uh, other competitors and trying to improve every day. This is our base, today we are still here, tomorrow we are leaving for Tokyo, for Enoshima, our girls are super ready, 470 girls, watch out, Gianluca in laser Ilka class, he's also a rookie but he will kick ass, see you in Enoshima. Finally we finished with our main activities. And now we are packing our last thing to take to Tokyo and we just can't wait to go. Let's go! Yeah! Ready! Hi guys, this was my last training. See you in Tokyo! <laughs>